In case you missed the news, Mac OS Catalina is now officially released to the public and these are the 10 features that you will love. Let's go ahead and get behind a Mac and get started. Alright, so here we are on our Mac. So one of the new features is this first one we're looking at right now. This is the new dynamic wallpaper which color shifts. Now before you remember how we had dark mode and uh, light mode, now there's a new automatic. So if you go to system preferences right down here like you typically would, go to desktop and screensaver, here it is. So we had these two in the past but now we have this new one and I gotta say it looks really nice. A little island right there, Carolina. But if you go back to general, and uh, this is where you find a new auto feature. Now, before we only had the option between dark, which you can see just color shift right there, and then light, and that's how we originally had it. And if we leave it on auto, well, it just does it very on the time of day it is. Right now, it's still 6.55 in another hour, so it's going to go to dark mode. So this is not only easier for your eyes, but I mean, yeah, it's, it's really cool it automatically will color shift. So the second thing I want to talk about is the new side card. This feature is probably one of my favorite features. And then you know right here where you get the Apple AirPlay icon if you want to cast to a TV? Well, with side card, you could actually connect right here to your iPad. So if you have one of these little iPad stands, you could literally just unfold it. Let me see if I can move this over here. And this is my iPad Pro previous generation, not the latest. But if we select iPad Pro, give it a few minutes, watch this. Bam, we have our screen right there. And literally, it could mirror it or be an extension. Right now, I have it as an extension. And uh, right now, it's wireless. And the latency, I mean, it's pretty quick. I haven't experienced any issues. And then, cool thing about this, you got all your controls right here, like the keyboard. And you got little command keys right here as well to shift up. And you can also pop up the little toolbar. See how it goes away from the Mac to here. And then minimize it and it goes back there. This is a really cool feature. And yes, indeed, the Apple Pencil is supportive. So we can go on Safari for instance. Uh, let's hop on YouTube real quick. There we go, let it load. You can also use your hands too. You also get your iPad notifications there too. But what I really like about this, if you actually launch like something like Photoshop, let's go ahead and quickly move Photoshop from this computer to this one, you can take advantage and use this Apple Pencil as a natural stylus. And uh, it does, it's also pressure sensitive too. So if you apply a lot of pressure and like lighten up, this is extremely amazing for not just Photoshop, but also on Lightroom, I would imagine. So you could fine tweak the brightness level. You could probably do that here too. See? That is incredible. Definitely is revolutionary. I guess for certain things like this, you need the Apple Pencil to hit don't save. But for web browsing, you could do two hand scroll or pinch and zoom. If you experience like a latency issue, if you notice that your iPad is going really slow, cause it is technically connecting via like your Wi-Fi broadcast, your broadband I mean. So having one of these cables, like let me just show you what would happen if we connect it. So right here you have the options to mirror the built-in retina display. And you also have the other settings right here as well. So if we disconnect it real quick, and we go ahead and actually plug it in. And if you set this up for the first time, go to System Preferences, and you see Side Card right here. Click on this. Oh, that's why we weren't getting it. But select Device, iPad Pro. And now our iPad Pro is mirroring everything. And it's also mirroring the little toolbar down here too, if you notice. Yeah, see, I accidentally disconnected the cable, so it says disconnected. But if we connect it, so if you have any latency issue, connect the cable and I'll eliminate that and it's going to be really responsive. Now while we have this cable plugged into our iPad, let me go ahead and disconnect it. I don't know if you were aware of this, but iTunes is no longer iTunes. They split up. The music app store has its own music tab, application, podcast is separate, as well as Apple TV. We'll talk more about those in a little bit. But you, now you might be asking yourself, how do I synchronize or back up my device? In order to do this, let's just go ahead and plug in our iPhone. And if we go to our Finder, 
right here if we scroll down let me go ahead and unlock my iPhone give it a few seconds all right so this is our iPhone Pro so I don't know if you caught that but I literally went to finder and go down to iPhone and this would be where you back up your device as well as add like music TVs podcasts you're basically your manager files and information so it's no longer found on iTunes now you have to go here so if you ever need to restore your iPhone or check for updates this is where you do it or even back up your device all that information is now moved over here on the finder I gotta delete a bunch of videos don't criticize me on the storage capacity but that's where you find this now hey check it out it just shift to uh, night mode see so it's seven o'clock right now it looks like it but it, yeah it automatically just did that to night mode but uh, for the next feature I want to talk about is the new screen time so if we go to system preferences and we see a new screen type screen time right here tab click on this and it's going to show you like the amount of time that you spend on even on your computer applications now too so you know in the past we had this information available on our ios devices but now they integrate that on the mac os but something new if you have a family plan you could also manage other people devices so you can see like their history right now unfortunately this uh he doesn't have his thing turned on but if i turn it on for him i have full control of this because i'm the owner of the family plan so if i turn this on i can literally manage all the stuff i could block certain applications without having to actually like physically have their device and yeah you could like hit the little down arrow right here and manage across all your other devices so but this is a new screen time app it's really cool now another new thing that we have we have more control of our notifications so back in system preferences you hit the little notification tab now you actually can individually control each notification from different application and not only that we can also change the like banner if you want to remove the banner entirely or you want to have an alert like this you can change the style you can also turn off and similar to like iPhones you can also show the preview on the locks uh, while it's locked so if you leave your laptop locked and you get a notification it's gonna be visible for anybody to see on the screen if you leave it always when unlocked I mean so find my iPhone or now it's called find my can be located right here and you know how in the past we had to go literally go on Safari to go in and change this to like log in to like locate your device or mark it as lost or even erase it now there's an actual native application for your MacBook so you no longer have to go on Safari doesn't you can still go on on any computer though I'm pretty sure it's still available on the website if you need to log in this way but having it like this you could easily click on it I'm gonna go ahead and blur everything probably due to privacy but everything is blurred out but you get the general idea all your devices are gonna be right here and holy cow I have a lot of devices and never realize how many devices I own but something unique about these latest firmware updates from Apple is that now similar to like a tile as soon as you mark that device lost that Apple device if it passes by another Apple device was in Bluetooth range from what I hear it will quickly update the last known location so you can quickly find it if this is true, let's say for example your laptop or maybe an iPad was stolen at an airport, if the thief himself has an iPhone, as long as his device has internet connection, it doesn't require your lost device to have any connection at all. Because the thief owned device will actually help track your device if it does get stolen. So this is really clever and pretty cool. Now the mailing application itself also got a massive update. Now let's go ahead and launch our mail application so right here we not only have the ability to actually manually hit unsubscribe and uh hit okay and now we are unsubscribed automatically from that mailing listing but my favorite thing let's say for example you get these annoying emails that are just constantly coming in like this one for example if you actually right click on the on the contact information right here you can actually block this contact so now this message is blocked from the sender and if you want to unblock it if you hit preference I'm also probably gonna blur this if you hit on this any message that you get from this email address will automatically be sent to the junk mail so it doesn't disturb you that's really cool definitely does give you more control of your privacy so let's go over to three new applications so obviously we got the music tab right here I'm already am subscribed to Apple music there we go 
So right here, looks like the standard iTunes, how it used to look like without the bloatware all on top. Everything is, all your music stuff is right here. Your playlists, I have a lot, don't judge me. I gotta fix, uh, clean it up. I haven't cleaned up my playlist in a while. But you can find all the albums, art, radio stations that you listen to if you're subscribed to Apple Music. All that information is right here. Really user friendly, self explanatory, right? Now, if we go to podcast, podcast is finally separated, and I really do like this new feature. This new look is a lot better, a lot more presentable, and again, it's similar, very similar to like the ice, the uh, music application. You got all this information right here on the left side, and of course, the clean layout here on top. You can view your episodes recently updated, so any of your podcasts that you follow will pop up right here when they update their stuff, and then Apple TV. Of course, when Apple TVs get will get launched, and if you purchase an Apple product just recently, you're gonna get it one year for free. But this is where you go ahead and watch pretty much all the cool shows that's going to come out really soon. And you also have access to your library if you own some of these. You could just quickly download it right here from all the music that you redeemed over time. That's how I got these movies. Cool, right? So for number to nine, I have to talk about the new sharing functionality of things. So let's go ahead and launch something like Pages. If we load this up, we are not prompted with this since it's the first time us doing this. So right here we have a file. If you actually hit share, check this out. You can add people to these documents. So right here we can either send it by email, message, or copy a direct link, even airdrop. If we click on share options, so anybody, people that we, you invite will only have access to this document or anybody with the link will have access to this document. So if we go ahead and do link and the permission, can we can make them to only view the document or we can allow them to actually make changes. And it uses your iTunes account. So as long as you have an iTunes account, you can do this, but this is the cool stuff. Uh, when we hit share, it's gonna create that little custom link for us. And you can either like send it like this, but I'm just gonna go ahead and hit cancel go back to the share and right now we're back here where we're managing it if you hit the share option you can hit the copy link now we have the link copied on our computer if we actually go ahead and open up something like Safari paste that link it's gonna take us to this Apple website and right here it's gonna just tell us like a general thing we can put our name and this person whoever has access to this link because that's how we set it has access to change pretty much anything so they can scribble on it and it's going to automatically be saving on here on top and then afterwards if they if they do have an itunes account they could just sign in right here or sign up but uh this is really cool it just gives everybody access to whatever document or allow other people to view documents that you send out by simply sharing a link or send it to them as a text message this also works with other work related apps too so let me hit stop sharing and also works with like keynotes even a note application as well. So this final one, I really want to show you this cool one. This is actually really cool and, and actually works okay. I'll show you. Uh, if you go to system preferences, back over here, go to accessibility. If you scroll down to voice controller, and if you go ahead and enable this, the little microphone icon right here is gonna low. It might take like a few minutes or so if it's the first time you're activating this. But uh, while we're waiting, check mark play sound when command is recognized this way you get some feedback and there we go this microphone you can literally tell it to do anything hands free so right now no hands i'm gonna go ahead and tell it to launch google chrome show numbers show numbers so obviously there are some bugs that still need work work on for some reason it's not doing it let me just hit open because this is gonna be the first time uh chrome has opened up on this computer allowed that okay search on chrome close chrome chill numbers chill numbers oh it's not working very well <laughs> uh it was a cool feature i don't know why i wouldn't launch safari okay google.com enter i didn't ask it to do this one Select one. Select one. 
All right, there's clearly a huge delay. This could be caused because I'm recording, but uh, that's basically the voice command. I, I seen people use this like flawlessly. I don't know why I'm experiencing all this issue, but um, those were all my top 10 favorite features, new tricks that innovated on this latest OS. And there we have it. Those were my top 10 features that I'm sure everybody will love. Some new tips and some hidden tricks, except for that last one. That last one, uh, there was a noticeable delay. This was probably because of the low spec MacBook Pro that I was using. And literally all the RAM was being taken up since it was already screen recording and audio recording at the same time. But I've seen some people use the voice over a command feature and it looks, performs really well. But if you guys want to check out more, some awesome third party applications to download that's free on the website, definitely do check out this video that will definitely enhance your overall Mac experience. And then this video over here, that is a video that YouTube is recommending specifically for you. They think you're going to like it. Are you? I don't know. Go ahead and check it out and comment down below if YouTube was right. But thank you guys so much for watching. Take care and I'll catch you on the next one.